Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Levette Jallo. If you're an oldie but a goodie, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me again and for supporting. In this video, as the title suggests, we'll be talking about an incident that has happened in Sweden, which is not an isolated incident, it's not a new incident, it's something that's been going on since I was a kid in Sweden and went to school. Um, it's with regards to a situation at Falkenberg Gymnasium where some kids that, they're kids, they're under 18 guys, they're children at school, who have had issues with racist um, incidences at their school by teachers and by, by principals for many, 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 many years, actually filmed a racist incident where a teacher repeatedly, repeatedly uses the N-word even though you can hear in the children's voices and what they're saying that it's offending them, they're really taking it personally and she should stop. But she doesn't stop, she continues to yell at them and continues to use these words. I will show you the clip in a second. This video will be mainly in English but at the end of the video I'll be speaking Swedish because that's what I'm directing to the school who is not really taking responsibility for what is happening. So let's take it back, let's get this video started. What do you think about when you think about Sweden? You know, that Scandinavian country, right there, yes. What do you think about when you think of Sweden? You think about beautiful blonde people, you think about, you know, us dancing around a upside down penis once a year to celebrate summer coming. Um, you think about great vistas, you think about amazing people and whoop, you're right, Sweden is filled with amazing people. It's filled with people who care about each other, people who will do everything in their power to not offend and to educate themselves to be better human beings and understand structures that are ongoing when it comes to racism. So Sweden's amazing and it has amazing people, but it also has a small amount of human beings that do not believe racism is a thing, do not believe in human rights and do not understand the importance of seeking knowledge in order to make this world and this country a better place for every Swedish person no matter if they're white, brown or black. Because at the end of the day, that is my main aim. To have a country I love, to have people that I love in the country, but people who also use their personal time to educate themselves so that they can stop harming other people and stop holding up these structures that at the end of the day lead to people killing themselves. Let's get that out of the way. So, here's the clip of the video. I want you to listen and to hear what is being said. Even though you don't understand Swedish, I will translate it for you. Say it again! Alltså fucking jag på dig, säg det igen! Säg det igen när du tar åt oss om du ser att vi tar åt oss, säg det igen! Vadå är du sant? Nej men skit i dig! Jag, jag här. sitter ju här! Men, men jag, sa, min dotter är sambo med en somalier och jag... Du sa arab innan! Sluta fucking ljug! Nej, jag har två döttrar. Ah. En av dem är ihop med en arab. Har... Jag ljuger inte för henne, du får ju skärpa dig! Du ljuger visst! Jag har en dotter jag det, du som är ihop det. med en arab. Du och jag har det. en dotter som är, bor ihop med en somalier. Jag skiter dig! Jag har fortfarande att du ser ligg och bort framför mig. Ja, men då sa jag så. Och då kommer jag att få små gulliga, kanske få små gulliga, små negerbollar. In that clip, you've got two kids that are speaking up against a teacher who is using the N-word. The teacher is using the N-word while describing her potential grandkids because as she claims, she's not a racist because her daughter is together with a Somalian boy. So we're back to the excuse that I can't be racist if I have racist people, uh, black people around me, which is wrong. There are men who have women around them who are still misogynistic, so that argument will never hold. You can hear the children in the video telling her, please stop saying that word because it's offending us. And she says, well, my daughter is dating X, Y, and Z, and they will probably have kids that will be small N-word people. Okay. Okay. So, let's talk about this. This is a school, an institution that our tax pays for. This is the place we send our children to be educated. This is the place where we advise our children to be respectful to elders and to listen and taking information because these elders are in charge of their education. But this is also the same place where elders and teachers in powerful positions use their position to degrade and to bully people. 
young people, kids. Because for me, if you're under 18, you're a young child. Anyway, so these kids, I saw the video circulating and I was like, this is wrong. I need to speak up on this. So I contacted the school first and I told them I've seen a video that is very disturbing regarding one of your teachers. I didn't get a reply. Then as I put it on my Instagram, Black Vogue, people started commenting. And this happened last week. It's now Tuesday. This happened last week on Thursday. The school responded by posting that they do not stand by this teacher, etc., etc., etc. Cool. Then people started commenting underneath that post saying, well, what about the teacher? Poor teacher. This is not unusual because in any situation where anybody of any age speaks about racism in Sweden, the first thing people say and tell you, including myself, is, what about the other person? They didn't mean it that way. They have black people in their lives. La, 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 la. It's people that actually make it seem much smaller than it actually is because I can assure you if the children in the video were any other type of children, people would react because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your skin color is. Every child deserves security and to feel safe in the school that they're in. And if this was the first time this happened, my reaction would be very different. But this is not the first, second, third or fourth time. This is not even the 20th time this has happened because since I have gone public with this information, the first day two people inbox me who have left the school and are adults now telling me about what they went through in that school. By the second day, I had 10 more emails from people going to the school informing me of what their teachers are saying and doing. So this is not an isolated incident once again. Now let's ask, what are the school doing? So far nothing, because it's been a long weekend in Sweden. The school haven't done anything, they haven't really taken this seriously and in fact I can inform you that the last time this happened and the students went to the principal to speak about it, the principal told them, I have lived in Africa. Like that immunizes you from being racist or having racist ideas that harm other people. You can live in Africa, that does not mean you understand structures and racism because I understand as a white person, it's very difficult to understand racist structures because you walk through doors that we cannot even step foot into. It is hard to understand racism when your eyes are not open to it. So I emailed the school again and I said, some of your teachers, because this is another fact that is really disturbing, teachers in the school are posting on Facebook defending the teacher that's using these degrading words. They're going publicly, because it's not private posts, it's public open posts that everybody can read. And they're saying, well, we now live in a, in a country where you can't even say anything. Another excuse that people use to quiet down anybody that speaks out about racism, about Islamophobia, about transphobia, about homophobia, all of these things. is like, well, now you can't say anything in this country without people being offended. Well, people would not be offended if you didn't say something worth being offended about. But let's go back to it. So last week, a teacher who is a friend to this teacher that did this, I'm not gonna say her name because I, it feels bad in my mouth to even say it. So another teacher who's buddy-buddy with this teacher went into his classroom and told people that I hope these kids are happy now because there's no going back. What does he mean with there's no going back? There was no going back when the teacher said racist things in a classroom. This is not a situation created by the kids. This is a situation created by the school and the adults. And I offered them a chance. I said, let me send you a list of people who can come here and lecture to your teachers and give them tools about how not to offend and minimize the children that they're responsible for. No reply. In fact, they deleted their posts, they deleted comments, they blocked people, and here we are now. Tomorrow, the kids are supposed to go back to school. The children's parents are stressed out of their minds. The children are scared to go to school because the teachers have been spreading so much negativity and not taking responsibility, which is what we're asking for. Take responsibility of what you've said, apologize and educate yourself. 
Instead, the school is trying to hope that because we've had a long weekend, by the time people come back to school, this would have been forgotten. I do not forget. That's one of my, my, my biggest issues, I don't forget. And I can't handle when school systems and teachers and adults bully and minimize children that they are responsible for. I am not a mother. I do not have children, but I do have brothers that are in the same age as these young people. In fact, when I was 15, I had to be in a classroom and have my own teacher, a white person, tell the whole classroom, Negroids have lower intellect because of our brain size. This is a teacher, this is an adult who now I've heard has gone into pension saying that against me in a classroom. So if this situation is something I'm passionate about, it's because I have lived this situation before. And I'm so angry that in 2018, that's like 15 years since I last went to school and this happened. We have not moved forward. We are still traumatizing children because they look different, even though they're Swedish. So the image I showed you at the start of this video, Keep that in mind and understand that Sweden, like every other country in Europe, has black people, has brown people, has white people. There's good and bad in every single one of them. But one thing we cannot stand by is allowing an institution where young children are in to be the same institution that breaks them down. And the school, the teachers are now threatening the children, saying that they're going to report them to the police for spreading rumours. These are not rumours, this is a video with your words, not your face, and what you did. So if they come after these children, I can put my word and assure you that I will put time and money and my lawyers on the case for these kids, because you will not get away with that. So the school, Falcon Barisim Nasi Eskubla, Talk to your teachers, ask them to stop spreading inflammatory information on public social media. Tell, take your responsibility because you hired this teacher, you allowed this teacher to continue degrading children that look differently for many years. But this is the first time the children took a stand for themselves and recorded the situation and allowed us to take part in what their daily life has been. So the People that deserve your empathy and your support right now is the children and their parents, not the teacher that attacked them during class. There is no way in heaven or hell that that will be acceptable. Understand that. Now I'm switching over to Swedish because I need to speak to the school. Falken Bergsim Nase Skola. Alla ni som har läst mina meddelanden, som har läst alla mejl som jag skickat, ungdomarna kräver, Sverige kräver, alla som är insatta i det här kräver att ni ska ha samma omtanke för ungdomarna som ni har för lärare. Ni ska ta ställning och ansvar och utbilda era lärare så de har verktyg att inte kränka andra barn. Skolverket och skolegendom är enda platsen där föräldrar, oavsett om deras barn är vita, svarta eller bruna, skickar sina barn för utbildning. Så där, det kan inte vara ett Område där vuxna lärare, makthavare kränker barn. Det är inte okej okay och det kommer aldrig att vara okej. Okay. Onsdag är imorgon. Ni har lovat mig att ni kommer återkoppla om hur ni ska gå vidare med detta. Vad kommer ni ta för ställning för att utbilda era lärare? För att se till att inte bara Elisabeth mår bra men även barnen hon har kränkt mår bra. För ingen önskar henne. Något illa. Men vi kan inte stå bredvid och låta barn kränkas. Det är aldrig okej. Okay. Jag vill att ett principal, en rektor, ska ta kontakt med mig. För barnen kommer inte komma till skolan. För de känner sig så kränkta. De, känner, de är fulla av ångest. Hela den här helgen där ni har firat Valborg så har de varit hemma med sina föräldrar. Och varit stressade, fyllda med ångest. Och nu säger ni att samma lärare som går in och likar Facebook-posterna ska nu betygsätta ungdomarna. Nej, det kommer inte hända. Ni måste ha krishantering och ha ett möte internt och prata ut om detta. Barnen överdriver inte och nu äntligen har de bevis på vad som försiggår i era klassrum.
ta ansvar, det är min sista varning. Och försöker ni polisanmäla ungdomarna så kommer jag gå in och jag kommer försvara dem med all i min makt. Bara så ni vet.